All right, what's up guys? We're back here with another video and we are continuing our series of reviewing all of Stephen King's adapted movies. And the nightmare has begun. The Children of the Corn movies. So we, w we went through and reviewed the first Children of the Corn movie. And I just went through and watched the uh, second one, Children of the Corn 2, The Final Sacrifice. This movie was made uh, seven years after the original. Well, um, eight years after the original one. And the original one had a lot of plot holes, but it was somewhat a story. This one is batshit crazy and stupid at the same time. There is just so much inner... This movie doesn't just have plot holes. It has inner interlapping storylines and retarded directing choices. This movie is an abomination. But I'm probably going to give it a guilty pleasure because this movie was one of those movies that made me laugh the entire time because it was so bad. It's a so it's a so bad it's good movie. So I'm probably going to give it a guilty pleasure because it's really bad but it's fucking funny because it, some of the acting in it is just oh my god so bad. Oh, man, where to start with the story on this one? So it, it's a direct sequel to the original one. So it is a sequel. Um, so Malachi and Isaac are dead. And now there is a, I'm going to call this character the Malachi wannabe. He's the new Malachi. And I'm pretty sure it's the kid from the Jeepers Creepers movie in Dodgeball. Not sure if I'm correct on that, but correct me if I'm wrong. But... Anyway, the Isaac wannabe... Okay, so this movie takes place in the neighboring town from Gatlin, uh, Hemingford, which is the neighboring town. And this movie has three different storylines in it. Holy shit. There's one storyline where the townspeople in Hemingford... No, there's like four. There's one where the townspeople in Hemingford are poisoning the crops... To sell the toxins that they put in the crops, they like let it marinate over time and that creates a special toxin that's worth a lot of money. So the adults in the town are selling that. Then you got the storyline where the children are doing the same shit from the first movie, except now they got sparklers and bow and arrows. It's retarded. They also have RC cars, apparently. Um, then, oh, there is a, uh, they added a completely random uh, Indian backstory to this fucking movie because it needed that, apparently. Yeah, there's a whole entire Indian lore behind it now. Oh my god, what the fuck? Oh, don't even get me started on the lightning corn. Oh, What's lightning corn, you may ask? Oh, I'll get to that in a second. Oh my god, this this movie is one hell of a trip. Holy shit. Okay, where to start with this one? So the movie starts off with this guy and this other guy. They're going down in this basement. And there's a bunch of dead bodies, children, and adults down there. This movie's a lot more graphic than the first one. But there's actually some very decently made kills in this movie. Which was... The only part that I was impressed by was the decently made kills. There's there's some stupid kills, but the makeup on them was good. But, um... There's just a bunch of dead bodies in the basement, kids and stuff. So they get out of there, and it's right after... So the movie starts off in Gatlin. And then the second half of it takes place in Hemingford, which is the neighboring town. Which doesn't make sense in, since Hemingford was four miles away from Gatlin, but in the movie, Hemingford is like right next to Gatlin. Also, they uh, changed the whole thing where the parents were, all the parents were murdered by their kids. They changed that to, they actually took a select few of the parents to sacrifice them to he who walks behind the rose. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention? They took out the part where they killed he who walks behind the rose and he comes back in this. Because that makes fucking sense. So that entire ending scene is completely gone. Holy shit. 
Okay, what to do now? Um, yeah, it's about a couple days after the fact, and they're going... I guess the remaining children... It doesn't make sense either, because the remaining children in Children of the Corn, except for a select few of them, were normal. But in this one, they've resorted back to batshit crazy kids. So they're, like, loading the remaining kids on the bus thinking they're okay... And there's a news story going on. And then we get to meet our main characters. It's this reporter guy. I mean this uh, reporter guy. I'm going to call him the reporter guy and his son. And I'm going to call him the son. So the reporter guy and the son are driving to Hemingford to get more stories about Gatlin. Because everybody's dead in Gatlin apparently. So everybody's back in Hemingford. So he goes to Hemingford, and when on the way there, he meets up with these two other uh, news anchor guys, and one of them's this douchey bald guy, and the uh, another one's a black minority character. But shockingly enough, the black minority character dies first in the movie. Whoop de fucking do! Yeah, this movie takes the horror movie cliche: black guy dies first. Yes, black guy dies first in this movie. Even though we do see dead bodies earlier in the movie, he is the actual first on-screen death. So they, the reporter and his son drive off while the news van guys drive to a detour. So they're trying to get like a... So we get to a shot of them. They're down the road. They left the reporter guy and his son. And uh, I guess they're trying to take a detour through the corn so they can get a good picture of the corn, which is another plot hole. Why the fuck would you take a detour through the corn to get a picture of the corn when there's corn all the fuck around you? There are acres of corn. Just take a goddamn picture. Oh my god. D oh. So they drive in there and they get stuck and this big old storm brews in. So he who walks behind the rose has new powers in this movie and it is stupid. He has all the original powers from the first movie, except in this one, he has the ability to make the air, I mean, create tornadoes out of thin air, make storms come in, turn himself into a storm, shoot lightning from his gooey body when he's in black goo form, now he can shoot lightning, and he also has predator vision. Oh, did I forget to mention that? He who walks behind the rose now has predator vision in this movie. And the best part, the part that made me laugh so bad is the black guy's death because he crawls out of the van into the corn because for some reason they decided to get out of the van. He crawls out of the van into the corn and trips in the corn and the corn shocks him to death with lightning. The corn shocks him to death with bolts of lightning. And then a giant bolt of lightning comes out of the sky because apparently he can conjure lightning now. It fucking blows the satellite dish off the news van. And then we get the most stupid death of the movie, but it made me laugh so hard. The second, the second news van guy gets back in the car, the bald guy, and he gets in the driver's seat and this stalk of corn flies up out of the air. And you can clearly see the string on it. It flies up out of the air, goes into the front windshield, and impales him through the throat. But you can obviously see the string. So, a stalk of corn impaled him through the throat because, yeah, apparently it can break through your glass and fly through the air like a fucking ricocheted bullet. Oh, lightning corn. That's gonna... That should be a uh, corn album, Lightning Corn. Yeah. All right, moving on. Oh, what happens next? Is there really a story here? Not really. Anyway, the reporter guy and his son get into town, and they run into a. Uh, they run into this hot older chick that's like the reporter guy's age, not the son's age. She's like in her 30s. And the reporter guy thinks she's hot. So he's like, can I ask you a few questions? She's like, no. And then he's like, uh, I, I guess she eventually breaks down and lets him ask a question. Also, uh, apparently he's not 
he's not her son, but the Isaac wannabe is now uh, adopted by this woman. Because, yeah, we need to include him in the story somehow, so fuck it. Anyway, um, oh, god damn it. So he asks this chick, can I, do you have free room? I mean, do you have like a place that me and my son can stay so we can do this fucking story? Well, I can do this fucking story. My son doesn't. Okay. So his son is having this like fatherly issue because apparently the reporter dad left when he was like six or something and he just met him a couple months prior to this. Something like that, and he's all pissy at him, so they don't have a good relationship. Anyway, yeah, she offers him 30 bucks a night, so they end up staying with her, and oh, god damn it. So, they get in a fight, the son leaves, and the son runs into this chick that he eventually ends up banging. Uh, it's this uh, local chick, and she's hot, and she rides a motorcycle, because yeah, and... Yeah, they bang. Anyway, moving on, uh, we get to find out that... Um, oh, then we get the next death. So then we... Uh, I guess Isaac now, the Isaac wannabe, has the ability to uh, create voodoo dolls out of pieces of wood. And he starts stabbing this voodoo doll in church. And one of the guys in the front row starts bleeding out of his nose. But, like, there's no stab wounds on his face. But he's, like, digging into this fucking voodoo doll. And all we see is just blood pouring out of his orifices. And I guess that's how he dies. I... <laughs> Explain to me why this movie, if there is a, even is a movie here. I mean... <sighs> Oh, and then we get one of the sweatiest sex scenes I've ever seen. So, I guess the reporter guy ends up banging the chick that he was renting her room from. So, I, I guess the chick that is fostering Isaac Wannabe ends up banging the reporter guy. And they're banging, and it looks like they just both got out of the shower. It is the sweatiest sex scene I've ever seen. And I'm just like, wow. This movie is one hell of a trap. Oh, oh yeah, and then we get uh, then we get to meet the... Uh, oh, the crazy religious lady of the town. So apparently she used to teach school at Gatlin... But she moved to Hemingford because she wanted to get out of Gatlin. But why did she move to Hemingford if she wanted to get out of Gatlin? Surely she would have moved farther away from that, but she's an incompetent bitch. So I guess the uh, he who walks behind the rose has the ability to summon this uh, acidic substance that somehow when you put it on a... Uh, Put it on a uh, wall or a texture, it doesn't melt it. But when you put it on clothing, it does melt it because that makes sense. So yeah, there's uh, acidic moss in this. Yeah, and apparently, So the kids don't like this old woman because she's religious and she's staying at this house with her cat and I guess she loses her cat and the kids leave. She's looking around for him, but then she doesn't see him. So she goes looking for her cat and he's under the house. So she goes under the house to get him. Cat runs out from under the house and the kids walk up to the house. They grab the cat, kill it. And then I guess the house was like on this like fucking pump thing that held the house up. So they release the pump and the house starts collapsing down on her. And it fucking crushes her and then we get a death from uh, Wizard of Oz. It is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And then, um, yeah. So then we get uh, another fun death. Um, that chick's sister end up, ends up showing up. She's in this wheelchair or whatever. And this is the dumbest scene I've ever seen in a movie. So the kids walk up behind her in public on the street and there's people everywhere and they start driving this RC car in front of her. It's not just like 
two or three kids. It's like 10 kids. They're driving this RC car with this remote control. And you're like, oh, it's just an RC car. And they're probably going to trip her wheelchair and break her face or something. I don't know. No, apparently the uh, this magical uh, RC car controller has the ability to switch modes and control hack the wheelchair that she's using because that makes sense. And they hack the wheelchair or whatever. And I guess they drive her out in the street. She gets hit by a semi. And usually this would send her flying forward. No, this sends her flying to the side, still in the chair, into a bingo hall window, and doesn't get out of the chair once, doesn't even fall out when she lands. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen, and it's obviously a puppet in the chair. It. Oh, yeah. Because apparently Children of the Corn is no longer kids killing people with farming tools. Apparently, we use houses, RC cars, voodoo dolls, stalks of corn, and electric corn to kill people now. And apparently, they bury people under houses, too. And then, I guess, fuck, now the Indian burial... I I had to get to the Indian storyline sometime or later. So, the Indian storyline is basically like, there's an Indian thing and it causes the demon causes the children to kill adults. Also the entire thing with them turning 19 is uh bullshit. Now it's all gone. Oh God damn it. But now the sacrificing at 19 is gone, but now they have to sacrifice two virgin women every year because that makes sense. All right, then we get the final confrontation scene after the kids burn all the townspeople in a... uh... So the townspeople have this, like, meeting in this hall, and they burn them alive in there. Yay, who cares? Then we get the uh, scene, I I guess earlier in the movie, they the sheriff of the town tried to mow down the reporter guy because the reporter guy was talking to this uh, Indian guy. I'm going to call him the Indian guy. And they were out in the cornfield, and I guess the sheriff caught him. He pointed a shotgun at him. He tied him up, and then he was going to run him over. He was going to have the uh, combine or something run him over. I don't know, some kind of farming tool. So they got out in time, and the reporter guy was going after his son because he magically knew that his son was in this uh, cornfield with the Isaac wannabe, and they're about to sacrifice some people. And you got to stop that because sacrifice is bad. And, uh, yeah, the Indian guy takes hold of this farming equipment, and remember that for later. So then we get the bang scene between the son and the hot, and his love interest. The, I think she's like 16 or 17, I don't even know, who fucking cares. This movie's mo- mostly for laughs for me. So then, um, yeah, the final confrontation scene, uh, the love interest of the reporter dad and the love interest of the son are now the two sacrifices, because you got one virgin and one... Not virgin. Wait a minute. I thought you said earlier in the movie two virgins. No, apparently it's two sacrifices now. I, Who fucking cares? I mean, what the hell? Oh, God damn it. So then uh, I guess the dad shows up and he picks up one of the spears that the kids throws at him. And then he spears him in the heart and the dude fucking dies. So they killed the kid. And then Isaac wannabe has this like machete now because apparently the blood of the innocent is now part of the corn ritual. What the fuck? The corn ritual. What is this bullshit? I don't. I still got six movies to go. Why? What? What? Corn ritual. What? What the hell? Since when is there a, a corn ritual with a fucking machete? What the hell? Oh, moving on. Anyway, Isaac gets chopped up by... I guess the Indian guy shows up and he gets bow and arrowed in the stomach by one of the other children of the corn. And he, uh... He just bleeds to death in the fucking... I don't know. He gets out and then bleeds to death. And then Isaac Wannabe gets... His legs get swept up in this thing, but he doesn't die right away. 
his face turns into a red demon and then it explodes in a fucking Microsoft PowerPoint done effect where it like explodes, it cracks open with light and then explodes into little crusty bits and then his face turns back to normal. Oh, God damn it. Oh, I forgot to mention before this, when he had the machete, this was the best part of the movie. I fucking loved it. He raised it up in the air like screaming and I'm like, Gray Skull, we have the power. Because there's like lightning coming out of the sky on the machete and he's like raising it above his head. And I'm like, by the power of Gray Skull. And I'm just like, wow. I wish I, I would have died laughing if he said by the power of Gray Skull. That would have made that movie so great. Oh, so he he ends up getting chopped up and uh, fuck. I, Isaac Wannabe dies. And then we get the exact same ending from the original one where the son and his love interest and the reporter dad and his love interest drive off in the sunset together. And yeah, more sweaty sex. Children of the Corn 2, Final Sacrifice. I'm going to give this one a guilty pleasure a so bad it's good because this movie is so bad it's good. This legitimately had made me laugh. It, it was a funny movie. So yeah, Children of the Corn 2, The Final Sacrifice. Remember to leave a comment, like, and subscribe.